Good evening, sim racing fans, and welcome to Podium Esports' coverage of the 2021 Dirt Sprint Car Championship Series presented by All-Star Visuals, Oceanic Dirt Sim Events, and SpeedShop51.com. Tonight, we bring you coverage of Round 7 live from the virtual Limeland Motorsports Park in Alita, Ohio. I'm Justin Prince. Alongside me is my colleague Taylor Burris. Our producer Ryan Bauer is behind the scenes down to the virtual production trailer. Ryan is using cameras provided by Dougie Beer. Thank you so much for tuning in for tonight's action, as it's very fitting that the first quarter mile race of the season heads to the quarter mile of Thunder, where drivers are expected to be tire to tire with several different groups, Taylor. It certainly is going to be very exciting to see these drivers battle it out on this quarter mile bull ring here tonight at Lima Land Motorsports Park. Drivers are going to be all over this race course and with just how fast the times are, 10 seconds or even less possibly happening here tonight. It's going to be exciting all the way through and through. Now, one of the main storylines coming into tonight, Taylor, is Cameron Merriman, where he's been carrying a ton of momentum. Three straight victories entering tonight at Weed Sport, Williams Grove, and Volusia. It's going to be interesting if you can keep up this trend here tonight, especially with the stacked field expected to take part this evening. Well, Justin, let's be honest. Every single time the Dirt Sprint Car Championship Series kicks off any race, it's going to be a stack field. You have drivers who are current, former world championship competitors, multiple champions in this field here tonight, and then also some rising talents that could possibly one day battle it out with some of the pros in the future. So it's very exciting to see what these drivers can do here tonight. So far, four different winners, mind you, in those six races. As we take a look where we're at tonight, as mentioned, quarter mile is this facility length. This is owned by the University of Northwestern Ohio, this campus. And this facility, based nearby, near Lima, Ohio, tries to hold that these drivers get ready for what should be expected to be a big-time show tonight. It was opened in 1935, this facility, known as the fastest dirt half mile in the world. Official distance 0.3 miles when you go into the full length clay surface for today and it opened originally as a horse track called Allentown Speedway so a lot of history here we're on the 16 degrees of banking and 8 degrees down on the straightaways these drivers will be racing in late afternoon conditions here for tonight's action with 35 laps for the feature race this evening Speaking of that, let's take a look at your race analysis for these drivers, which will be running in the dirt sprint cars, the 410 specifically, where the top two from each of the six heats will take part in 10 laps apiece. The drivers who advance to the top two will go straight to the feature. The rest goes to the alphabet, where the top four from the E main go to the D main, the top four from the D main to the C main, as well as the C main to the B main. The B main sees eight drivers go to the feature that again is subject to change based on car count, but it should be worth noting tonight already has 53 plus registrants for today's action. These competitors currently in the midst to qualify for what's expected to be an action packed one here and it's quick. Two laps, two minutes to set the fastest times. Drivers had the fastest practice time to Bryce Lucius for 10.5, followed by Garrett Holsey, Zachary Burrard, William Racine, Eddie Hartley. Routed out the top five, the speeds expect to be a little bit slower with the track worked in a little bit from practice, Taylor. Certainly is right now. The fastest time is 11.060 by Ryling Gray in the 06. He's got a little bit of work to do right now. Let's see if he can hold on in these closing seconds here in qualifying. But so far, he could be your pole sitter. 
Let's see how things fare out. But your expectations for a race like this, knowing it's going to be close quarters racing, and this is the type of racetrack where several drivers will be daring to go to the inside, but as well, several will be trying to rip that cushion. It all depends on how your car is comfortable in each area. Remember, this is open setup, so drivers can build the setups as accordingly to fit their driving needs as well as the conditions of the track. So I'm pretty sure they're making small adjustments each and every time, especially after this qualifying, making a quick small adjustment in order for them to be ready for their respected heat races. Final few moments of qualifying now wrapping up where drivers set 11 second lap times at the top of the board. And Berlin setting the quickest of those times with 11.030. That was followed by Rylan Gray, Chris Sapeske, Jacob Denny, Mason Hennigan was your top five in overall times. But that leads us now to our first grid of the night. It's heat number one in the virtual Latin Land Motorsports Park. As we see Aiden Berlin bring us to the green flag, followed by Garrett Holsey. They were separated by two tenths in qualifying. Lane Stevens starts in third today with Ross Cornyana starting in fourth. Eddie Hartley will start in fifth with Matthew Quill in sixth position. Curtis Merriman will start in seventh with Michael Heidelman in eighth. And Alex Bergeron did not set a time. There is, keep in mind, Dirt Car Esports were several over competitors for tonight. We may see Alex Bergeron come in during the alphabet later on tonight. And as these drivers now grid, who are you keeping your eye on, especially keeping the momentum going, is Aiden Berlin, who's been improving a ton this season. He certainly has, Justin, one of probably the most improved drivers since the start of the Dirt Sprint Car Championship. But also, Garrett Holsey as well has been having some great speed throughout the entire season. And of course, you see one of the Merrymen in there, Curtis Merriman, of course, that is the father to the Merriman who have been having dominating the last three races. Keep an eye on him. He did have a fast car last time out at Volusia. Keep in mind as well, a few weeks ago, they were the first father and son duel in the history of the DSCCS to make a feature race together. But our drivers will have one more pace lap before we get underway. Your expectations for these heats. Well, looking back at past Dirt Sprint Car Championship heat races, it's going to be the top two pulling away as quickly as possible. But that battle all the way towards the back half of the field, because even though that we're going to be still ending this race with the top two advancing, there's still positions to be gained for the features. Green flag is out and we're already pushing and shoving for second. Several drivers going 2-3 wide already. Berlin pulling off and away. Holsey able to jump back to second. Steven Snow not giving up on the bottom side. The school sim racing machine keeping up the pressure. Here comes the run, though, from Cornada on the top line. Lane Stevens trying to work his way up into third as he has Cornada on his outside side by side. They'll go as they work off turn number four down back and once again into turn one. Pretty much just one big circle for these drivers as they keep on turning left and right, holding onto their cars. A great start for the top two once more, despite the bit of contact off the jump. But Holsey able to utilize that middle to top line right now. Berlin also in those same tire tracks, keeping a lane and a, half, and a half off the very top along that cushion. Six laps to go in the first heat, coming to five laps to go this time by. Olsey hit the wall off turn two. That's going to allow Ross Corniata to make up some time right now on his competitor to see if he can have a shot. It's now down to less than a, tenth, a half a second between the two drivers as Holsey gets a good run off turn two. Holsey trying to build up that cushion even more so. Four laps to go at the stripe. He now utilizes the bottom, the first of the drivers to do so. As the thumb machine continues to try and pull away. Bit of over rotation coming off the corner, trying to dime in the off the exit. Having to pull away a little bit more from the Vanna Motorsports machine. Coming to two laps to go this time by. A couple of more attempts for Ross Corniata to see if he can find his way around Garrett Holsey now as they come across the line. Two laps to go for your race leader of Aiden Berlin, who has had a dominant race here in heat race number one. Berlin is pulled away by more than 1.2 seconds as he takes the white flag. Final lap in the first heat. Berlin has kept things clean since the jump and has been able to now pull away by a quarter of a racetrack for the checkered flag. He wins the first heat. Garrett Holsey will advance with them directly to the feature. 
The rest of the drivers crossing the line is Ross Coronada, who will finish in third, Eddie Hartley in fourth, Grove will finish in fifth with Stevens in the sixth position. Curtis Merriman finishes in seventh, Michael Heilman in eighth, and Alex Bergeron did not take the green flag. That brings us into an action-packed and stacked heat number two, as that's Rylan Gray who will bring us to the green flag fall by Cameron Merriman. Rusty Krueger will start in row two alongside Kevin Hamley with Brandon Matson in fifth position. Rob Winks will start in sixth with Tyler Chunk in seventh. John Batista will start in eighth position with Zachary Brouillard starting in ninth. That's look top to bottom at your running order for heat number two this heat. Presented by Speed Shop 51. Speed Shop 51 is an iRacing setup shop which offers individual setup packs, coaching, custom designs, and much more. Their main goal is to help improve the skill level of all competitors across the iRacing platform. Speed Shop 51 was established in December 2020 by Clayton Tilly. For more information, you can check out their website at www.speedshop51.com or follow them on Facebook and Instagram today. Drivers now rolling for heat number two, and this is going to be an interesting run. Several pro drivers in this field, as well as Rylan Gray with a new look machine at the front of the field. Yeah, nice to see some new colors on Rylan Gray right now in his 06 as he gets ready to go here for the Dirt Sprint Car Championship as the green flag should be coming out this time by. Ron McGray known for having good speed as well as some rear road experience. Cameron Merriman, of course, with some momentum. Rusty Kruger right on behind as the green flag waves. Quickly underway as several drivers jump up to the top line. Immediately, Merriman already has jumped up to second position. Shuffle back as well as a result off the start was Hanley and company. Hanley taken 2-3 wide by several drivers as they start to fan out. Cameron Merriman taking a peek now as he goes to the top side of the racetrack. Here comes Rusty, Krusty, Rusty Kruger right now as he works his way through in third position. He'll go to the top side of the racetrack, get the momentum going. He will try to get to the outside of Cameron Merriman. Back and forth now for the bubble position. Make it three wide for the race lead. Contact, Kruger gets put into the wall. He gets shuffled about to fourth position. Cameron Merriman jumps up to second. Matson now goes back and forth for third position. Some big time contact leads to some big time fighting now side by side for both first and third positions. Back and forth they slide. Merriman now making contact with Gray coming to halfway. Halfway time this here for the drivers as Merriman still works the inside lane. He tries to pull a big slide job off of turn two. Give him the race lead. Cameron Merriman now to the point in heat number two. Gray not giving up easily though. Here comes Matson with the big send. He's now shuffled up to second position. Gray now squeezes up to the top. Kruger now slides up. Big contact along the cushion. Matson now runs a lane lower. Kruger now tries to rip the top with three laps to go right next to the fence. Merriman now starting to pull away as pandemonium has broken out for the bubble spot coming to two to go. It certainly has let the chaos ensue off of turn number four. The battle for second between Maston and Kruger. Now Kruger with a big send off turn two, but Maston will respond side by side as they enter turn three. Coming to the white flag in heat number two, back and forth for the bubble position as Barney the Flagman waves the white. Back and forth as Matson makes contact with Kruger. They slam the wall. They spin down the straightaway. The 21 hits the wall. John Batista and several others now go to the line. It will be Kevin Hanley, though, who will get the second position. Separated by eight one hundredths of a second. John Batista, Ryland Gray, Zachary Brouillard, Matson, Chalk, Winks, Kruger, Racine, or rather Chalk rounds out among your drivers after a topsy-turvy heat number two, to say the very least. That brings us to heat number three. My goodness, what a closing to that one. Chris Sibske will bring us to the green flag in heat number three. Jimmy Barr will start in second. Bryce Locius in third. William Racine will start in fourth with Vinny Sansone in fifth. Vincent St. Louis will start in sixth with Vince Romeo in seventh. Trey Galgan will start in eighth. Joshua Walton rounds out the nine drivers in heat number three. What a firework filled affair for that bubble position for second in particular to try and advance on in heat number two, Taylor. Well, we talked about it, it's that there was gonna be chaos in these heat races and we just saw it right there. And unfortunately for those two drivers, 
for Kruger and Matson. It cost them dearly. They now have to go to the back end of the alphabet soup in order to have a shot at making it to the feature tonight. Keep in mind, Sapeske has had a lot of momentum the past few weeks. The Phantom Motorsports machine has been very quick. The majority of the track so far this season. Keeping my eye, though, on Bryce Loesch is very quick in practice as well, Taylor, and he showed good speed as well. William Racine, you can also put in that grouping from four. Well, don't count out Vinny Sansone and Vincent St. Louis, two very strong drivers all throughout the season as well. Keep an eye on them as they're starting in fifth and six. Want to go signal on the iRacing pace truck, and they are laying back very far for this launch for heat number three. It's safe skate though in control of the field. Green flag waits up with a stand from Barney, the flagman. Off and away we go. Safe skate gets the good launch. Jimmy Barr with a poor launch. Already jumped by Bryce Lucius. Vinny Sansone already puts them under attack. Three wide for third position. It's William Racine though that gets the jump under the pack. Triple for Vince Romeo as he'll get punted and sent around right quick. He has to lose a ton of position right now, but the battle is on for the race lead as we see Chris Gage holding offense as three wide for second. That is Sansone trying to work the bottom near contact as they start playing the different lines. Lucius now going up to the top line. Sansone trying to ride the bottom. Same skate now goes up to the top as well as Joshua Walton from the back of the field joins the fun as well. Back and forth, five cars covered under a blanket and make it six. Make it seven possibly as well. Trey Galgon also in this picture as you're on board with Joshua Walton just sawing at the wheel to try to hang on as they work their way through one and two. Side by side for the race lead. Still Lucius trying to work that cushion. Meanwhile, Sanso trying to run next to the infield tires that lay just inside that dirt. You have to be careful not to clip those tires and cause trouble and damage to your machine. Sansone going right to the very bottom of that line, making it work, still holding on to second, but Sabeske not giving up along the top line. What a battle right now here for second place. Sansone's trying to hold on to second place as he sees Sabeske is trying to find a way around him on the top side of the racetrack. He's got Joshua Walton, though, hot on his tail as they work down the back straightaway into turns three and four, closing in two laps to go. Two laps to go at the flag stand as Sabeske actually clipped a bit of the tires. Lucius, meanwhile, has pulled away by 1.1 seconds. He looks comfortable for the white flag this time. Sansone, though, now starting to clip those tires in the infield with the white flag. Final lap. Can he hold on with a hard-charging Joshua Walton behind? One last chance. Checker flag waves. Lucius takes first position. Sansone does hold on for second. Walton gets within four tenths of him, but we'll have to go to the alphabet. Sapeskay finishes in fourth. We're seen in fifth position. Jimmy Barr in sixth. St. Louis in seventh. Galgun will finish in eighth. One lap down goes Romeo after that incident and his heat. That will round up the nine drivers who took part in heat three. That brings us to heat number four. And it's going to be an interesting field of drivers for heat number four. It's just Jacob Denny bringing us to the green flag with John Fall in second position. Austin Solomon's had some good runs this season in this series. He'll start third with Jason Randolph in fourth position. Keep an eye on Davin Cardwell in fifth position. The pro driver has a lot of success, especially in the late models, as Jeremy St. Louis will start in sixth. Justin Saptoskny will start in seventh with Caleb starting in eighth position. Ryan Shadi will start in ninth position. That's a look top to bottom at your running order for heat number four for this one. It's heat presented by Oceanic Dirt Sim Events. The Australian Iron Racing League specializes in dirt events. For more information, visit Oceanic underscore dirt underscore sim underscore events on Instagram today. Interesting development right now, Justin. Davin Cardwell did not make it to the grid right here, so he will have to go through alphabet soup once we get things done with the heat races. Jatiz is that driver in the 66, by the way, that's starting in the eighth position. As we get ready for heat number four, Justin Prince Taylor Burst with Ryan Brower in the production trailer for tonight's action using cameras provided by Dougie Beard. And what's been some intense action? Already the rubbing tires for the first row. 
Interesting development as off and away we go for heat number four. Austin Sullivan able to jump up to second and fast. Already trying to attack Denny. Denny able to build up a cushion as they start wrecking behind him. Several cards bounce off one air in the heart of the pack. Up towards third position goes Septoshni as a result of that contact. A break indeed right now as the battle for the race lead heats up between Denny and Semelman as they work their way off of turn four, down back into turns one and two once again. Semelman on the bottom of the racetrack, Denny working the cushion on the outside as they keep going. Here comes Semelman for the race lead off turn four. Not able to clear by Denny though as Denny is trying to slide through a lot of slick that started to build up, especially in the top line. There's also been some build up you can see with some of the shining light along the middle groove of this racetrack. Getting a bit of moisture on the side by side as Denny able to power it on the exits. Better on the rotation for into the apex for Sullivan on the bottom of the racetrack. Great drive right now for these two drivers and doing what they need to do. Keep on competing and holding on here. As you see, Semelman get up on two wheels briefly right there, but he's able to keep on going and possibly about to approach some lap traffic here. That's John Fall that they're getting towards, who is in seventh position. Keep in mind that Jason Randolph is in eighth position. Bit of a wheelie there for Denny coming towards the stripe, coming towards the final couple laps. Three to go this time. Three laps to go between Denny and Semelman. These two have checked out on the rest of the field right now as we watch on throughout the field. Actually, some contact happening a little further back between Justin Zapanok, Ryan Scheidt, and Jeremy St. Louise as they continue white flag in the air. Coming to the white flag this time by as Denny has now been able to build up a seven-tenths of a second advantage after near contact on a near clear by Settlement. Fastest lap set by Denny in this race. 11.8, bit of contact with the wall. They'll come to the checker flag with Denny taking first. Settlement will take second. Both of them will move directly to the feature. Satoshi in the Zap Motorsport machine. Finishes in third. Ryan Jadit will finish in fourth. St. Louis Jadiz in sixth. John Fall in seventh. Keeps on the lead lap. Randolph finished five laps down. Davin Cardwell did not take the green flag. That brings us into heat number five. And this one features a mix of familiar faces and some new names too. Mason Hannigan will bring us to the green flag with Trevor Frank on the outside of the front row. Trey Smith will start in third with Donovan Lussier in fourth position. Hayden Harvey will start in fifth. Nathan Davis in sixth position in Black Diamond Motorsports Machine with Grayson Springer in seventh. Logan Mallett will start in eighth position and Jonathan White will round out the nine drivers in heat number five. And this is a good mix of veterans for the series this season, as well as some newcomers. The new ones, for example, Donovan Lucier, who will be starting on the outside of row two, making one of his first starts of the season. Certainly so, and it's going to be a great to see how these drivers can do here in their first attempt in the Dirt Sprint Car Championship. And what a track really to compete at here at Lima Land Motorsports Park, where it's high speeds, a lot of fast action going on throughout the circuit, so be prepared. And since we're only just one more heat, wait, heat race away from the main alphabet soups, it's going to be interesting to see how the track conditions continues to change. The iRacing pace truck is off. Getting ready for the green flag. Off and away we go. Good launch by the top two. Trey Smith already providing pressure as already for the slide for the race to lead Trevor Frank. Back and forth, near contact for second. Mason Hannigan already jumps up. Several cars make contact in the arm cone, calling Donovan Lucia from fourth position. Hannigan has been able to get a clean launch, though. It's not over yet for second. Trey Smith able to get the run on the outside for now. So far right now, Trey Smith, Trevor Franks battling for that final transfer spot for second place. They're side by side as they come off turn two down the back straightaway here as they continue to do battle as we see Nathan Davis get around Jonathan White for the fourth position. Let's see if he can run down the Trey and Trevor. And, oh, and trouble for Mason Hannigan. He's making contact after slamming the wall. Trevor Frank has been up and over. Several of your contenders in trouble. It's now side by side as a result for the race lead. Coming up to five laps to go in heat number five. Hannigan tries to roll the bottom, slides it up to the top. Smith now goes for the cross, nearly hits the left rear tire of Hannigan. 
Tough break right there for those competitors. Hannigan continues to do battle even with the incident that he just had. Trey Smith continues to hold on top side of the racetrack off of turn four down the front straightaway. Four laps to go. Coming up to three as these top two not giving up. Keep in mind this is valuable track position for the feature race later on tonight. Hannigan now loses the top though. Schmidt now goes up to the cushion. Hannigan forced to slow roll the bottom. And they get the better run though entering the corner. Schmidt able to send it now to the middle of the racetrack. Hannigan with the run back with two to go. And again, now goes to the top side of the racetrack off a of turn two. Here comes Schmidt taking a peek as they work down the back straightaway. Nathan Davis in the catbird seat watching on. White flag in the air for the top two. Final lap. Can Smith take away this heat race victory or will Hannigan hold on? Hannigan goes to the bottom to defend. Smith goes up to the top. Checker flag waves. The little hurricane takes the checkered flag. He and Trey Smith will move on from heat five directly to the feature. Rest of the field now crossing the stripe. Nathan Davis finishes in third. Jonathan White in fourth. Logan Mallett finishes in fifth position. That will be the last driver in the lead lap. The rest of the driver several laps down. Lucia in sixth position. Trevor Frank seventh. Grayson Spinner eighth. Hayden Harvey did not take the green flag for heat number five. That brings us into a jam-packed heat number six. Bernie Williams Jr. will bring us to the green flag for the final heat race of the night. Adam Elby will start on the outside of the front row. Austin Griffey and Carlin Cure will start in third and fourth with Mike Augustine in fifth position. Phil Brinkley will start in sixth position with Jody Fiducier in seventh position. Caden Folkers will round out the eight drivers who will take part in heat number six. This heat is presented by All Star Visuals, your home for high quality graphic design and outstanding customer service. If you're looking for a new racing logo or hero cards, look no further. All Star Visuals has you covered. For more information, visit facebook.com forward slash All Star Visuals today. Drivers now rolling behind the iRacing pace truck and Taylor. It's been some entertaining action so far. What are some of the trends you've picked up on this racetrack so far? Well, this is showing that we can run multiple grooves here tonight, Justin. We've seen drivers using that top side of the racetrack majority of the time, but also using the inside, taking the slow lane, slow entrance in. That's what's been exciting. Multi grooves used tonight. Green flag is out. Off the way we go, and it's LB with the better launch compared to Williams Jr. LB able to quickly get to the cushion and take away the race lead by a few car lengths side by side for second. It's Griffey trying to slow roll the bottom. It's Williams Jr. though with a power move down on the top. LB still holds on in the battle for second between Williams, Griffey, and Carlin. Cure now do battle as they dive it down into turns three and four. Cure on the middle of the racetrack while we see Griffey trying to work the outside. Williams Jr. holds that second transfer spot as they come off a of turn two. Griffey nearly hits the wall. Tries to stay focused as he now rides the wall. He gets shuffled back to seventh position with a mistake. It's now Cure as a result into third position. The Rocket Racing setups machine trying to find a way to get to Williams Jr. Going to the middle line with six laps to go, trying different lines here and trying to find the moisture. Trying to find the right groove that best suits their car as they work off a turn two right now. LB has like a little bit of a cap over Williams Jr. The battle right now to keep an eye on is between Williams Jr. and Carlin Cure. That is for the transfer spot. Off a turn two, down the back straightaway. Cure gets a good run uh, compared to Williams Jr., but the difference right now is a tenth of a second. Four laps to go this time by. Phil Brinkley has gone around to the back straightaway. He's now off and away from the rest of the race leaders, but... The pressure is still on for Ernie Williams Jr. Still losing momentum with three laps to go. Cure now within a car length. Still watching this battle here. A little bit of lap traffic in front of your race leaders of Adam Elby. Will that come into play? He goes to the top side of the racetrack as he gets around Philip Brinkley right now to put him a lap down. Traffic may play a factor here as Cure slams the wall. LB drives by the traffic. Cure now loses a few car lengths for the white flag this time by. LB looks comfortable by 1.4 seconds. Just needs to clear by one more lap car to secure the checker flag. Williams Jr. right behind him. Trying to hold on with Cure to the outside. Checker flag waves. LB takes it. Williams Jr. in second. Cure will have to go to the alphabet as a result. Augustine in fourth position. Lucier finishes in fifth position with Austin Griffey in sixth spot. 
Folkerts will finish in seventh with Brinkley being the only driver a lap down in eighth position. Those were your heat races tonight and drivers do have a track reset coming in. It's a fresh track now for the Alphabet. It's the E-Main, 12 laps, top four advance to the D-Main, and the drivers will have the opportunity to compete from the alphabet. Start with Trevor Frank, who will start on the front row with Caden Folkerts. Michael Heilman will start in third after a quiet first heat race for him. Brandon Matson starts in fourth position, Trey Galgan in fifth. Randolph will start in sixth position after finishing several laps down in his heat. Seventh goes to Grayson Springer, eighth to Phil Brinkley. Alex Bergeron scheduled to start ninth with Tyler Chalk in 10th. The rest of the drivers, Vince Romeo, Davin Cardwell, Hayden Harvey, round up the 13 drivers scheduled to start the E-Main Taylor. Couple of things, drivers keep an eye on. Of course, Alex Bergeron, one of them, as he has now joined the field of cars in that number 12 sprint car and that Alex Bergeron racing as he gets ready to go here tonight. So we'll see what he can do. As well as, of course, keep your eye on Trevor Franks. I'm pretty sure he's looking for a little redemption after the last incident that he had in his previous heat race. Should be worth noting that Trevor Frank did not make it to the starting grid. So that, I believe, gives control now to Caden Folkerts for this start from the outside line, which can make things interesting. Hearing as well, no Cardwell for this E-Main. So two drivers not able to make it to the start for this one. Gonna be interesting how this one fares out, especially with Bergeron in the heart of the pack. Last time he attempted to try and go through the alphabet, it was early trouble for the multiple time champion. The iRacing World about Laws. Green flag is out. Off and away we go for the E main. Bergeron quickly trying to get to the bottom to middle lines. All while they shuffle for the transfer positions. Matson already to the lead. Howellman spun around in the pack. Galkin and several others make contact as they all strain and melt. Bergeron's now to second because of that. Talk about that and what a redemption as Jason Randolph ends up on his side. He has to pull, take a toe and go down pit road. But right now, watching Brandon Matson, Alex Bergeron battle for the race lead. Here comes Bergeron to the top side of the racetrack, trying to build that momentum up to get around Brandon Matson. And this is valuable track position. Keep in mind for the D-Main, this would put you as the first of those drivers trying to work their way from the back of the field. And we've seen how crazy these alphabet soup races can get. Michael Heilman in trouble from a transfer spot. Shuffled on the front straightaway to eighth position. He's been off the now off the racetrack. It's Vince Romeo that is holding onto the bumble for now. Gelgin now shuffles him up to the wall. Gelgin now gets hit from behind by Brinkley. Vince Romeo actually got pushed up and hit the wall himself. He is out of the race as well. So it's now Matson, Bergeron, Tyler Chuck, Trey Galgan, your top four transfer spots right now as we have approached the halfway point. Out of turn two, contact between Galgan and Brinkley. Galgan maintains fourth. Brinkley now trying to get gather things back up as Hayden Harvey from the very back of the field now joins the fray. Harvey taking away fifth position, needs to try and get to Galgan in four laps to have a Sean at that bubble position. Four to go. Four laps to go right now as you're on board with them as they come off of turn two down the back straightaway here, working through turns three and four. Harvey trying to see if he can have anything for Trey Galgan on the middle of the groove as they work through turns one and two. Down the back straightaway, great run for Harvey. He takes a peek on Galgan. Near even between these drivers with two laps to go. There's Harvey with the send. Harvey with the move. Harvey with the slide. Able to get the slide job complete. Galgan tries to go for the switchback. Can't do it. Coming up to the last lap now in the E-Main. It's Matson up at the front of the field who's been able to hold on. He'll come to the checker flag and take it with Alex Berger on Tyler Chonk and Hayden Harvey. All moving on, Galgan, Brinkley, Volkerts, Romeo. Among the drivers now done for the night, Michael Heilman eight laps down as well as Romeo in ninth. Randolph finishes in 10th. Three drivers did not take the start. Frank, Springer, and Davin Cardwell in the E-Main. That brings us to the D-Main top four advance to the C, where it's Rob Winks looking to try and run away from the field with Jimmy Barr at the front of the field. Chatiz starts in third with Lucier coming in away with fourth position for the start. Griffey in fifth with Curtis Merriman in sixth. Rusty Kruger in seventh. Vincent St. Louis in eighth. John Fowle will round out the 
top nine with Brandon Matson in 10th position. The rest of the drivers also came from the E-Main. Bergeron, Schock, and Harvey are those drivers. And now it becomes interesting to see if Bergeron can complete the alphabet after seeing him have the bad luck the last time, Taylor. Do you think he can make it all the way to the feature race from the E-Main through the B-Main? If he stays out of trouble, it doesn't, well, I, I hopefully doesn't make any mistake, but just stays out of other people's mistakes, he could probably do it. He is probably one of the few drivers in this entire field of cars that could go from the E main to the feature race. Who else are you keeping an eye on here? Well, you also have Rusty Kruger as well as well as Curtis Merriman starting in 6th and 7th position. Vincent St. Louis, another driver who didn't have the greatest run during his heat race. Keep an eye on him to see what he can do as well. Green flag is out. We're off and away for the D main. Jimmy Barr shuffled quickly the second. Winks able to quickly get to the race lead. Fight is on as Griffey makes contact. He's up and over. Several cars bounce around. Bergeron involved in a sandwich with three more sprint cars. He's able to weasel his way on through, but Bergeron, as a result, has a long way to go. From eighth position, the rest of the pack continues to fight. Meanwhile, Rob Winks is your race leader right now, holding strong with Caleb Sheets in second, as well as Hayden Harvey, Brandon Matson rounded out as we see more drivers. Now we see Bergeron up to four. Another car hard into the outside wall. More cars making contact if they continue on. Bergeron now up to four. Rusty Kroger is now out of the race as a result of contact. Bergeron has been using the tires and using those bumpers to his advantage along, the, along that race car. From 11 to 4th now and closing in on Matson, coming to 7 laps to go. Your top 4 separate by a couple seconds as Luthier has also now off the racetrack from 6th position. John Fall is now the last car running that is not in a transfer spot as Bergeron takes away 3rd. He certainly is. Moves up to third. Let's see if he can hunt down Hayden Harvey, who's not that far off the road from him. Takes it to the outside of the racetrack, works it down to the middle groove off turn four. Those two will do battle right now as they work their way off of turn two. Winks continues to lead, by the way, by 2.3 seconds. Bergeron provides the pressure now on Harvey. Bergeron now goes for the slider from the bottom to the middle. Able to clear on corner exit. Harvey with the switch back. Goes to the bottom, slides it up. Bergeron forced to check up. What a nifty move to get to the bottom. Crossover after crossover between the two drivers as they work off turn two. Here comes Harvey with another crossover to the inside. Slide jump, crossover by Bergeron back into second. Bergeron's been able to stomp on a dime in this battle for position to be able to cross up Harvey. But as the white flag waves, it's the final lap and the focus is now for these drivers. Make it to the checkered. Rob Winks holds on to the lead by one and a half seconds. Checker flag waves out of turn four. It's Winks who takes the D main. Followed by Bergeron, Harvey and Matson. John Fall will be the last of the drivers running, but he will be the one of the first drivers out of the D main. Oshie also is out seven laps down. Jatiz finishes in 7th, Rusty Kruger in 8th position, Jimmy Barr, Austin Griffey, 9th and 10th, Curtis Merriman, Vincent St. Louis, Tyler Chalk also did not finish. That brings us to the C main, and boy oh boy, have the Alphabet Super Races delivered once more. It's Jonathan White from the front row with Mike Augustine, with Matthew Grote in 3rd. Berlard will start in 4th position, William Racine will start in 5th. Jeremy St. Louis starts in 6th position, while Logan Mallet will start in 7th. Leducio will start in 8th. Lane Stevens, Rob Winks, the top 10. And then that brings us to your drivers from the D-Main. On top of Winks, it's Bergeron, Harvey, Matson, who will be at the back of the grid. Justin, one thing to keep in mind, Bergeron, Harvey, and Matson, they started in the E-Main. So three out of the four of our E-Main drivers have moved on up to the C-Main, so a big accomplishment for those ones. Following along with some of the fans watching tonight's action and one of the broadcast followers saying, imagine bringing the Wing Warrior to the golf course. That's in regards to Rob Winks, who has a golf-themed car for tonight. Very interesting to see that on his car right now. 
And let's see if that will help him get a little... You know how golf balls are aerodynamic. Let's see if that aerodynamics will help him out a little bit here tonight in order to get another shot at moving up to the B main. We'll see indeed as the iRacing pace truck is off. It's a slow roll for the green flag. Jonathan White able to clear on by as we're underway and quickly side by side for the race lead. How about 2-3 wide in the heart of the pack though? They fan things out as Augustine tries to get clear and does. Here comes the run to the bottom side. Here they come off a of turn number two. Brouillard now takes over the race lead from Mike Austin. Augustine as they work their way through. Move Matthew, Matthew Croak up to second as they all do battle with Augustine. Here comes J William Racine holding on to fourth with Jeremy St. Louis in fifth position as they dive it through turns one. Big crossover. Back into turn one they go as Augustine shuffled to second. Racine is in third. Make it now fourth as Croak is now trying to clear on by. The Bossy Race Design sponsored machine. Jeremy St. Louis, his teammate, trying to also follow suit. Bergeron, by the way, is only in 12th position. Has been able to cut his way through the pack, still stuck in the back. Here they come off turn four, down back into turn one. Brouillard, Augustine, Croak, and Racine, your top four. Not a whole lot going on for our drivers who are in the previous stage. In fact, Bergeron sits 12, Harvey 7, Matson in ninth position, and Rob Winks in 11th. Near contact now for the bubble positions. Harvey gets spun around in the pack. Right behind several others, that's Zachary Brouillard trying to hold on to the race lead of the front. It's back and forth from Pandemonium. It's Croke now that's now among the drivers fighting for the bubble, though. It's Racine and St. Louis who are right in front of him with four laps to go. The teammates trying to hold on. Bergeron's now trying to get up into the sixth oh, position. Trouble. Oh, trouble indeed. Mike Augustine rolled the wall. He gets shuffled back to sixth position. Alex Bergeron now is up to fifth. Bergeron with the chance to try and shoot forward, hits the wall himself. Needs to close up about five car lengths in two laps. He's got a little bit of work to do. Here he goes down the front straightaway up into turn one, top side of the racetrack. Bergeron tries to get to the outside of Croquet, but can't work. Now he gets his shot out of turns three and four, move him up to fourth. What a pass on the outside line. Final lap for the Heat. Broulard has been able to run away from the pack. Team Dirt Car Racing goes one, two, three in the C main. Alex Bergeron gets the final spot. And it's Matson who is the first driver out. Croak will finish in sixth position. Hayden Harvey in seventh. Laducier finishes in eighth position. Ninth goes to Mallet. Augustine rounds up the top ten after being in a bubble spot. Finishes three laps down. White, Winks, and Stevens round out the 13 drivers. That brings us into what should be an action-packed knee main as a result. Eight drivers advance to the feature. It's Ross Corniata who will bring them to the green flag with John Batista in second. Joshua Walton starts in third with Justin Zaptokny in fourth position. Nathan Davis and Colin Cure in sixth, in fifth and sixth rather. With Eddie Hartley in seventh, Rylan Gray will start on the bubble in eighth. Safe K starts in ninth position with Ryan Sheet in tenth position. Taylor. 11th position is Zachary Bouillard, followed by Jeremy St. Louis in 12th. William Racine, 13th, and Alex Bergeron rounds out your 14-car field as we get ready to go. Pace truck pulls off. Justin, a lot still on the line here. Eight cars now moves on here. So this will be interesting to see who will come out on top. And a vast majority of the drivers, keep in mind in this B main, have had an opportunity to race in the feature of this season. But you have to think about the storylines when it comes to the drivers working the way to the alphabet. Bergeron trying to start from shotgun on the field, has to get to the mid-pack to move on, along with several of the others who are trying to do the same. This is going to be action-packed in the middle of the field. It certainly is, especially now that there are eight open slots left before we move on to the feature race here tonight. So a lot more aggression is going to be happening here. Our racing pace truck is off. Green flag is out. The B main is underway. Carnado with a great start. Walton quickly to the bottom of the racetrack. Hartley tries to work up towards the top. Already Gray has jumped up inside the top five of no cure to not take the green flag. The rest of the drivers will bow it out as a result for the bubble spots as Bergeron is already up inside the top seven. 
That's where Bergeron needs to be. Now he moves up to six as he works the bottom of the racetrack now as he works up to Rylan Gray for the fifth spot indeed as Joshua Walton still holds on to the race lead. But John Batista wants in this fight as well as Ross Corniata as the top three start to battle for the lead. They want to get valuable track position indeed for that main race just later on in a bit. But... What a run for Walton on the bottom. Able to get in front of the rest of this pack as Bergeron and company trying to ride underneath. Seven laps to go this time by Batista holding on to second. Corniata trying to run the bottom as several more shuffle in the heart of the pack. Four car shuffling as you are on board with Bergeron here. They continue on. He holds the six spot, but he wants more. He'll dive to the bottom of the racetrack off a of turn four. Pick up a two for one up to four. What a move from Alex Bergeron once more. Here comes Gray, though, to try and battle back. As they keep on being relentless, like that front wing says. Top three have been able to pull away, though, from the rest of the pack. Coming to four laps to go this time by. Batista still in second to Walton. Corniata in third, the bubble spot. Still held on by Eddie Hartley for the time being. Brulard and company still keeping the pressure up. Pressure is mounting here as we are at four laps to go here at Lima Land. It is Walton, Batista, Corniata, Bergeron, your top four, but the battle is for eighth position between Brouillard and Jeremy St. Louis. Can Brouillard make sure he makes no mistakes? Can St. Louis, his teammate, get up there to try and fight? Already, two of the Team Dirt Car racing machines are locked in at the moment if they hold on for the next two laps. Final couple times around as the majority of the field has worked its way up to the cushion. White flag is out. Final lap for the B main. Batista taking one more peek for the race lead. How about three wide for the race lead? Going on the defense goes Walton. Walton able to hold on. Bergeron back and forth for second. It's Walton who takes the checker. Batista in second. Bergeron finishes in third. Safe skate. Corniana Gray among your drivers in the shuffle. Gray gets shuffled from the heart of the pack down to 11th for the checkered though. The drivers who will move on then is Walton, Batista, Bergeron, Savesque, Corniata, Racine, Brulard, and it's St. Louis who gets the final spot. Hartley is out, Tatochny is out, along with Gray, Chidi, Davis, Cure, among those drivers who competed in the B main. We'll take you side by side, more coverage of Tonight's action for the Dirt Sprint Car Championship Series coming up after this. You're watching Podium Esports for the virtual I'm Milan Motorsports Park. Welcome back to the virtual Lamaland Motorsports Park where warm-up is underway for our competitors for tonight's 35 green flag lap feature for what's expected to be a thriller. Justin Prince, Taylor Burris with you with Brian Bauer in the production truck with cameras provided by Dougie Beard and Taylor. Everything's lived up to the hype so far, including several drivers working their way through the alphabet. This could be an exciting one to see who can move from the back to the front. Well, one driver to look at is probably the Alex Bergeron. He's done it. He has made it from the E-Main to the feature race, so keep an eye on him. But we do have a lot of heavy hitters competing in tonight's field. I mean, a lot of former champions, a lot of great heavy hitters in tonight's race. Well, let's see who comes out on top as we get ready to go for 35 laps. Can't forget, though, that Cameron Merriman looking to go four straight feature race victories tonight. We'll start on the outside front row. He's someone you definitely have to keep an eye on here. He certainly does. He's probably going to be the one to watch of all here tonight at Lima Land. Momentum is on his side. He is one to be watched to see what he can do here tonight. But it's Lima Land. We saw a lot of craziness happening here tonight. I'm pretty sure we are not done with that. Final moments of warm-ups. Your predictions for tonight. 
Uh, Merriman or Bergeron? Merriman or Bergeron? Which one to pick? I don't know. Either one of those two are going to be ones to watch. But if I want to go for a Dark Horse or a Wild Card Driver, I'm going to be looking over at Vinny Sansone tonight. He is going to be my Dark Horse pick to keep an eye on. He has great speed during the race. See what he can do here tonight. We'll see how these drivers have worked in this racetrack tonight as it's now gone to full darkness above the skies. It's time to look towards your grid for the feature race where it will be Aiden Berlin who will bring us to the green flag tonight. Cameron Merriman will start on the outside front row. Bryce Lucia starts in third with Jacob Denny in fourth position. Mason Hannigan, Adam Elby round out your top six Taylor. Seventh position is Garrett Holsey, followed by Kevin Hanley in eighth. Vinny Sansone will start ninth, followed by Austin Semmelman in tenth. Eleventh goes to Trey Schmidt with Ernie Williams Jr. rounding out your top 12. Joshua Walton with a strong run in the B main will start in 13th with John Batista to his outside in 14th. Alex Bergeron was in the midst of that battle for the race win. will start in 15th with Sapeskin scheduled to start 16th position. Ross Cormiana will start alongside William Racine, the last of the drivers, Zachary Berard and Jeremy St. Louis. Those are your drivers for tonight's action. 35 green flag laps on the docket in some time, just past 10.30 p.m. On April 14, 2021, track temperatures are freezing cold. 63 degrees Fahrenheit, 70 degrees is your air temp. Winds currently gusting at just 2 miles an hour to the east, to many 55% with partly cloudy skies for tonight's action. Justin, you call that cold? That's actually probably the best type of racing conditions here. Under the lights here in Ohio and Lima Land, that is some great racing here tonight. It's going to make it very interesting with track conditions. I'm excited about this race. I'm excited to see how things fare out too. This should be a thriller to see several drivers trying to charge from the back. Several drivers who have been improving throughout this entire campaign, getting a shot at the front of the field. And don't forget Cameron Merriman looking to ride the momentum of three straight victories entering tonight. iRacing pace truck is off. Green flag is out. We're underway from Lima Land, and we're already making contact for the race lead. Berlin trying to clear by Merriman, made contact by the front wing of his machine. They now make contact nearly with the wall. Top two able to get single followed out. Merriman though able to get the run into one and two to take away the lead. We see right now Merriman has that momentum on his side. He will lead, but here comes Berlin down to the inside of the racetrack. Off at turn two. It's now Merriman with about a two-car length advantage. Bryce Lucius is also trying to work that top line. Keep in mind that the heart of the pack is seeing two, three, one action at the moment. See them all fanning out behind your race leaders. Mason Hannigan among the drivers trying to slow roll the bottom at the moment. Majority of the drivers trying to utilize the middle of the top line, including Bergeron in the midst of the Hornets' nest. Bergeron up in 16th position right now, trying to work that top side as he's trying to get around Chris Skabeski. Skabeski hits the wall. He gathers it back up. Move Bergeron to 15th. Still trying to utilize that cushion as Bergeron to make passes all while Cameron Merriman. He's pulled away by more than a second already. Berlin losing about half a second lap as the caution is out. Vinny Sansone spun around on the back straight away from 13th position after contact with Ernie Williams Jr. A full 360 is enough to trickle the caution flag. Thankfully though for Vinny Sansone, no major damage to his sprint car. He just continues on his way, but he will be in 20th, so very tough hill for him to climb early on. These machines can take some decent hits, but you also don't want to damage that front wing clip on that machine. No damage, it appears, on Sansone from the contact, but we have completed about six green flag laps, coming up to 30 to go when the green flag flies. Good start to this one here, and Cameron Merriman had been off to a great jump, but we're all ready to one to go. Fastest lap of the race right now goes to Cameron Merriman with an 11.154. That's almost three tenths or about a, a little over two tenths of a second faster than half the field as the green flag goes back out. Cameron Merriman off with the good launch again, but already under attack from the little hurricane Mason Hannigan and several more. 
Elaine able to defend well in the Berlin Racing Machine on the high line. Here comes the run, though, starting to build up from Bryce Lucius. He makes contact with the wall, though. Lucius loses momentum. Denny forced to check up. Adam LB now going for the send as the caution flag is out of the heart of the pack. Several drivers spin around on the back straight away. And among them was Alex Bergeron, who hit the wall. Tough break for Bergeron. That car is definitely having a little bit of struggles right now. We'll see if he's able to continue. No, it, it's safe to say possibly Bergeron's done, as well as looks like Chris Skapsky, as well as Jacob Denny, as his nose is missing. No fast repairs available in this series. It's hard contact for several drivers going sideways and upside down. Just like what happened with Bergeron. Bit of contact in front of him. That's Smith who makes contact. And Bergeron immediately going straight to the pits. He certainly is. So a tough break for the multi-champion here in iRacing as he will have to come down pit road and probably safe to say his night is done. He's still running on the racetrack, but the downside is he's currently scored in the back of the field as a result of that incident. Meanwhile, at the front of the field, one to go signal. It's currently Merriman in the race lead, followed by Berlin Hannigan, Lucius Denny, top five, scored at the stripe last time by. See how things fare out. Austin Settlement is also in the heart of this pack. Keep in mind, green flag is out. Off and away we go. Merriman, Berlin, Hannigan, Lucius, Elby, the top five as they rumbled their way down the back. Down the back straight away right now. The battle is for second between Hannigan, Berlin, and Bryce as they work off of turn four. Gagala cars now once again through turns one and two as we keep an eye. Berlin now moves up to second. Hannigan, Lucius for battling second as well off of turn four, but it will be Aiden Berlin who will hold on to second. Going for the slider, meanwhile, for second is Mason Hannigan making contact again with the wall. Cameron Merriman continues to pull away, though, looking for that top prize in the evening. What a performance so far for Merriman. He's been the quickest driver throughout this entire race. Continues to turn quickest laps by up to three to four tenths a lap. He definitely has what it takes. You're on board with Alex Bergeron in the 15th position right now. Trying to hold on and see if he can work his way up to the field. That's Vinny Sansone in front of them. Off a of turn two as we keep an eye still for the battle for second between Berlin and LB who has now moved up to third. Making contact with the wall, though, as LB finally gets back into rhythm. Kevin Hanley also joins the front behind. I'll be trying to now move away a bit from the race wall. Side by side, for fourth position now starting to form. Lucia's still performing the cushion. A bit of contact as Hanley spins around with them. That triggers the caution flag. We're back in our yellow. Those two making contact, getting tangled up, does bring out the caution here tonight as we watch on the replay. These two cars just getting together right there. A bad slide as well, and they, they saved it, but unfortunately the caution was triggered for that incident. Yeah, indeed, and you see one more time. Good job by Hanley to make sure he didn't slide up into the traffic a little bit higher up, and that could have been big in that situation. But about 20 green flag laps to go. It's still Merriman in the race lead. Followed by Berlin, Elby, Lucius, Austin, Settlement. Currently rounding out your top five on the racetrack after the contact. Mason Hannigan shuffled back to about sixth position. Halsey in seventh. Williams Jr. Batista Racine among your top ten drivers. My racing pace truck is off. Green flag is back out. We're right back to racing once more from Limeland. Merriman pulls away from Berlin once again off turn two at the battle for second between LB and Berlin go at it LB to the inside Berlin trying to work the top side of the racetrack with momentum but LB will move up to second here comes Bryce Lucius now for second as he'll look to the inside Berlin will get by him for third and the caution is quickly out it's Ernie Williams Jr. and Vinny Sansone among your drivers who are now sideways and along their sides that's because of this you'll see on the replay There should be the contact right there up against the wall. And then, of course, finally, there's the contact with Vinny Sansone. And it looks like also, was that Bergeron? I was trying to see. Yeah. Who Rough night for Bergeron. Adds more damage right here. Tough break for Alex Bergeron with the nose damage as well. That car is going to be even more difficult to drive. Even running in the back part of the field with the damage, but now... The field will be reset again. 
Coming up to about 18 green flag laps to go in the league of back racing. It's Merriman, Elby, Berlin. Now your top three. It's going to be interesting to see what Elby can do now to challenge Merriman now that he's been clear of Berlin. It is going to be interesting to see what will happen here tonight. It's going to be interesting to see who can come out on top with this. But as the pace truck pulls up, we're about to find out. Green flags back out in our good launch from Cameron Merriman. Merriman working to the middle of the racetrack. The Swindell Speed Lab machine going some more lines. They try and go offset this time. LB trying to go middle line. Merriman preferring the cushion. 17 laps to go. Advantage is still seven tenths of a second. Cameron Merriman doing what he needs to do, running his line, running his race as LB tries to find the speed he needs to make up ground on Cameron Merriman. Still Merriman running the fastest lap of the race right now as they work off turn two, now back in a three and four. It's that quick where we're going around this circuit as they come across the line, 15 laps to go. This track starting to slow down and start to really work towards the cushion. But look at the three whites starting to form up. That's William Racine trying to slow ride the bottom with Mason Hannigan. Austin Settlement also in that grouping. Bryce Loesch is still trying to ride the top. You can see how slow they have to rotate to get along that bottom line and how much they're trying to utilize that to be able to clear by on Apex. They certainly are working on it on Apex as they work their way through up on the top side of the racetrack. Cameron Merriman starts to pull away from the field as they continue here. We are going to be 13 laps to go. Now down to 12 laps to go. Adam Elby still losing ground. It's more than a second and a half the advantage now. Pulling away by about two tenths a lap is Merriman. Berlin also losing time in the grouping as well. Still a lot of fighting in that mid-pack continuing right behind them. Several drivers, including Lucius, have now adjusted their wings to ride the bottom of the racetrack. Parrots are running that top before Austin Sullivan actually has switched to the top line as well. And this is all for the battle for fifth position outside the money paying positions. This certainly is critical for some of these drivers who want to have a shot at the top three to get the big money here tonight as they come down the back straightaway off of turn two. As we watch Cameron Merriman come across the line, eight laps to go here at Lima Land. I have to say it's been a dominating stretch for Cameron Merriman. He continues to lead, coming to seven laps to go. Can anyone do anything to beat Merriman is the question. 1.7 seconds now, the gap in growing. LB's trying to find the speed that he needs to catch up, but it might be too little too late here as LB ran per the fastest lap last time by with a 12.15 compared to Cameron Merriman's 12.16. So we're starting to see a little bit of it, but it might be too little too late. Barney the Flagman now gives a high five from the stand. Under five laps to go as lap traffic may play a factor. They are reaching the back end of Garrett Holsey, Jeremy St. Louis, Trey Smith in the heart of the pack. 15 cars still running, coming up to the checker flag. Mason Hannigan among the drivers, who is now trying to battle with Berlin, though. Going back and forth for the final money paying position. That's $25 on the line for third position. Able to clear by is Mason Hannigan, three to go. Three laps to go, LB trying to close the gap right now. He's still running faster laps than Cameron Merriman, but he's not close enough to make anything work. Two laps to go this time by. Battle for third, still very heated though. Berlin trying to run the bottom of the racetrack. Hannigan trying to run the top. All while the white flag now waves. Final lap for Cameron Merriman. It's been a dominating stretch for Merriman. Three straight wins entering tonight. Hell out of four. For the fourth time in a row, he wins in the Dirt Sprint Car Championship Series in dominating fashion. Albion second, third. Able to be held on by Berlin by a few 100s over Mason Hannigan with John Batista rounding out the top five. An exciting race and an exciting dominating performance for Cameron Merriman. He leads a majority of the green flag laps to take home a fourth straight victory in this series. LB and Berlin round out your podium with Mason Hannigan, John Batista, your top five. Austin Sullivan finished in six. John Wal Joshua Walton rather in seventh. Bryce Lucius in eighth. William Racine, Zachary Berlard round out your top ten Taylor.
11th position goes to Kevin Hanley, followed by Alex Bergeron in 12th, Trey Schmidt in 13th, followed by Jeremy St. Louis in 14th, 15th is Garrett Holsey, followed by Vinny Sansone 16th, Ernie Williams Jr. 17th with Chris Skapsky 18th, Ross Corniata 19th, rounding out your top 20 is Jacob Denny. That's a look top to bottom at your running order for tonight, and what was a thrilling one as these drivers seen Another dominating performance from Cameron Merriman. Cameron Merriman now with the chance to celebrate victory. Will be standing by for what was an exciting one for him. Four straight victories for Cameron Merriman. Cameron, you dominate again. 31 lead laps under green flag conditions. First of all, how are you feeling about four straight victories in this series? Well, I'm honored. I definitely didn't come into Lima Land thinking that I'd be able to uh, take one off of these guys. I have not had phenomenal performance here in any series, really, whether it's pro or otherwise. So um, I kind of knew where to go with the setup and what would be stable. And given that we had a uh, track reset where the they did preparation before the warm up uh, preceding the feature race, I knew that you know the lines wouldn't develop in the typical fashion because you dump 20 cars on the track, everyone just runs kind of wherever they want to run for that three minutes of warm up and and you don't get that natural progression that you get when you see from qualifying through the heat races. So I kind of went aggressive in terms of, you know, how how snappy I want to develop the race car as opposed to maybe what I might make for a really, really slicked off track. And that worked really well in the early stages of the race. And I think what that ended up manifesting as late in the race is, you know, with about 15 to go, I, I think I'll be, you know, on any given lap was probably a little quicker than I am. I don't know if he was making mistakes or anything, but he probably had a little bit of speed on me there at the end, but I knew that, you know, given the kind of buffer that I had built for myself, that Delta, as long as I could manage my own mistakes, I knew that I could take the win there, you know, down the stretch. So uh, given that we had very few cautions down the run, I was very thankful of that and put together a solid setup tonight and solid, you know, race strategy and plan of where to run and it paid off well, so I'm really happy. It's been a lot of momentum built up to say the very least. How important is it to keep this momentum going? Because you showed speed as talked about in the closing stage of the iRacing World of Outlaws Nostra Drink Sprint Cars World Championship Series season. You've carried it into this series. How important is it to keep up this momentum for you and how much pressure is it overall to keep this going? I, I think pressure in, in this sense is a little abstract. You know, you come in here on any given Wednesday night and the, and the stakes are actually rather low for the driver's perspective because Brody has put on such an excellent excellent series, you know, you're not actually wagering anything on your own behalf uh, going in. You know, the Pro Series, there's there's obviously an enormous amount of clout with that and in other series, it's kind of like showing up at the poker table with your friends where you throw in some money, but Brody's structured this thing in a way where it really just attracts the best of the best and so you know, I don't feel like I come in here any given night uh, stressed out or worried about how I'm going to perform. I just do my best to to try and capture lessons learned and make sure that I understand that I approach the evening and the strategy in the correct way. And when I do, it, it happens to pay off. So certainly momentum is a thing. I, I think that uh, that that concept also is a little ambiguous. Ultimately, I think it comes down to qualifying performance and not making any critical errors in the heat race, you know. You, you, you've drawn an analog or a comparison to the Pro Series, and in that, um, you know, we don't get to run in the tracks in practice like like you, like you do in real life. And so the, the qualifying lines in the Pro Series are super tight. It's one lane. We're here. It's It actually lends a bit to driver creativity because you never know exactly what you're going to get at the end of, you know, the seven-minute practice or however long it is leading into qualifying. Um, so it's up to the driver to be able to you know, make changes on the flight of the setup and also to the line that you want to run because that manifests itself into, in many times, many tenths of a second. It'd be upwards of three tenths of a second just for not hitting your marks or choosing a line correctly. And I, I like that a lot. So I find that in this series, you know, we get to run the track before qualifying. As long as you are, you know, well-versed as a driver in these sprint cars, you can put yourself in a great position after qualifying. So um, from my perspective, I've been able to, you know, show up in the front row of the heat races a lot and from there it's just keep your head on straight and don't make any critical errors and and uh, and also like don't get dealt any really horrible luck right because that happens too um and that i think all together has led to the four victory next race is at fairbury your thoughts on going over there on april 21st yeah i feel less secure about fairbury than i do about limeland that is a incredibly difficult track for the 410s just because of how tight it is 
And I think that the lines develop in an even more uh, constrained fashion. I don't think that I, I mean, honestly, I don't know that I've ever seen the four tens be remarkably quick on the bottom late in the development there. So it's really just ride the rim and, um, you know, hang your hat on a couple of slide jobs and hope that you don't dump yourself in the wall and, and also hope that the guy respects the move too. So it's really tough to get around there and it's going to be very important to have early uh, session track position through qualifying and heat race performance. So it's going to be tough. I'm looking forward to whatever comes after Fairbury, to be honest, but I'll be there. <laughs> Congratulations once again on the victory tonight, Cameron. Thank you so much and thanks for everyone and you guys for putting it on. Cameron Merriman coming away with a fourth straight victory, a dominating stretch for Cameron Merriman. Adam LB came home in second. He's with Taylor Burris. Here with Adam LB coming home in second place. Adam, you put on a great performance here tonight. Your thoughts on racing here tonight? Uh, yeah, race was a lot of fun. Um, and we were able to move forward, so that was good. Uh, good one to Cam. You know, he was he was flying. Um, I think I had to not too much too far off a pace from him at the last few laps there when I kind of went down to the bottom, but it wasn't giving me enough to reel him in. How big of a gap he led. Uh, good good win to him, but track was fun. It moved around quite a bit, so uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed that. Your thoughts on how the track condition changed? Because a lot of people were working the, up on the top side of the race track, but you were one of the few drivers who could make the bottom line work. Why is that? Uh, well, when everybody's up on the top because it's fast, you know, that the only place to pass them is on the bottom. So I think that's kind of, you know, kind of what I used to my advantage there to try and get by him. You know, it's, it only takes one person to slow up several and you get a few spots down there. So, you know, and you just got to keep your momentum up. Um, I think we're a little low on the gear there. Uh, we, you know, didn't really kind of underestimated how quickly the track would wear in. I thought it'd blow off a lot quicker, but you know, it, it even could have helped me down the bottom. You know, maybe I wasn't spinning my tires or something like that as much as some other people running the higher gear. Um, so yeah, I think it worked out pretty well. Anyone you'd like to say thank you to before we let you go? Uh, yeah, I gotta thank you guys for uh, broadcasting this and then Brody and all them guys for putting this on. You know, it's a good deal. Gotta thank my uh, team Swindell Speed Lab and all of our partners, K1 Race Gear, Bill Helmets, Racing Electronics, Bear Archery, and uh, all the fans and everybody who's watching. That is Adam LB coming home in second place here tonight after starting six, Justin, and you have caught up with our last driver, Aiden Berlin. Yes, indeed, and he's been someone that has been improving more and more and more as the weeks have gone on. Aiden, first things first, how are you feeling about your run tonight? Um, I feel really good uh, being able to go quick time with some of the best and then being able to win heat one and get a top three finish. I feel really good after tonight. Talk to us about the improvement you've been showing because at the start of the season, it was towards the back end of the field, then towards the middle of the field. Now, you ended up being one of your top qual the top qualifiers tonight and starting on the front row for tonight's heat race. Talk us through that improvement you've been putting in throughout this entire series so far. Yeah, definitely. I've been uh, putting, I would like to say, two to three hours a day at least um, practicing. I know they do a lot more to other people in the top three, but uh, just every week trying to get faster and try to give these pro drivers more run for their money every week. Next race goes to Fairbury. Your thoughts on going over to that circuit? Um, if it's around the middle, which it very rarely is for me, I do good. But when it's around the top, I like to hit the wall a lot. So we'll see how it goes. Well, congratulations on the run today. Thank you very much for the time. Yeah, thank you. And in Berlin coming away with a third place run tonight. I'd like to thank him, Adam Elby and Cameron Merriman for taking the time to speak with us for post-race coverage. Now, lots of action is coming up across the iRacing world as well as on Ponyme Esports, including the Jim Beaver Esports eShort Course Triple Crown. That's with the Pro 4 Trucks from Bark River Off-Road Park. That'll take place Thursday night, that's April the 15th at 9 p.m. Eastern Time on twitch.tv forward slash podium2. Then, it's the PCA Sim Racing Zone Group Challenge Championship for the Porsche 911 RSR at Road Atlanta. That's on Friday, April 16th at 8 p.m. Eastern. You can catch that on youtube.com forward slash PCA Sim Racing. Then on Sunday, it's the MPI Cup Series, which will head to the Brickyard. That coverage starts at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, 9.15 rather, at 
Podium Esports. Then it's the ERL, Anthony O'Frail's Esports Racing League, as they go dirt racing in the dirt UMP modifies at Knoxville for what's expected to be a thrilling championship fight between two of the very best. Find out more by going to the action on Monday, April 19th at 8 p.m. Eastern Time on twitch.tv forward slash podium esports. Then it is Talladega that will be hosting the eNASCAR Pro Invitational iRacing Series. That will take place on Wednesday, April the 21st at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Be sure to tune in for what's expected to be a thriller, to say the very least. The next time the Dirt Sprint Car Championship Series heads to the racetrack is at Fairbury, meanwhile. That will take place on April 21st at 9 p.m. Eastern Time at Podium Esports on YouTube, Twitch, as well as on Facebook. And then, Talladega will also be the host for the eNASCAR Road to Pro Qualifying iRacing Series in its first round. Be sure to tune in on Thursday, April 22nd at 9 p.m. Eastern Time on twitch.tv forward slash Podium Esports. A lot of thrilling action coming up to say the very least, Taylor, but your final thoughts on this one after what was a thrilling show tonight. It was full of excitement. A very good job by Cameron Merriman to go four in a row here tonight. He is by far the dominant driver of the Sp Dirt Sprint Car Championship. Will we can continue this trend, though, or will somebody else finally put a stop to the dominance of the Merriman? We'll have to find out next time we head to Fairbury. A very different track, as we've seen, Justin, of how different and difficult it can be to drive on that circuit. Yes, indeed. And who do you feel that favors the most as a result, then? Especially as talked about Merriman feeling like it's going to be even more difficult than Lima Land tonight. Well, I don't want to say who, because the last time we said something, who ended up winning? Cameron Merriman. So every time it seems like Cameron Merriman says, oh, I don't feel good about this track, he goes out and ends up winning the thing. So let's keep an eye and see how the practice would go. Aiden Berlin, though, probably one to watch as how well he's been. And unfortunately for Alex Bergeron, if he can just find a break in order where he can start up towards the front of the field, Keep an eye on him as well. He is one of the strongest competitors in the series. He's just running into some luck with starting so far back in these e the alphabet soup and these heat races. It's been interesting to say the very least so far, but it's time to say goodbye for Brody Wilhelm and Dirt Sprint Car Championship Series. For James Pike, Cisco Scaramuza, Gary Sexton, John Theodore at Podium Esports. For my colleague in the booth tonight, Taylor Burris, and tonight's producer, Ryan Bauer, I'm Justin Prince. Thank you so much for watching tonight's broadcast. We'll see you next Wednesday from Fairbury.